What's up, YouTube? So today I'm here with an update for my uh, watermelon vines. Um, I'm, I'm basically going to show the main reason why they've been dying out. They still are coming back, but they've been dying out earlier than expected. Now look at this. I've been lollygagging, I've been lollygagging around, and I left this Congo and the animal got to it. It's been ready for like four or five days. Been too lazy to come out and harvest it. All right, so if you look here, you can see all those bugs on that vine. So they're eating that vine up. Um, now, as we all know, I'm an organic gardener, and I only advocate organic methods in my garden. All right, I only uh, promote using organic methods. Period. Um, you can see that's a sheer amount of bugs. So what am I gonna do about it? I'm gonna take that grass I just pulled. I'm gonna smush it. Now, no more pests. So I'll show that one more time just because I don't think I uh, actually showed me pulling the grass just now. So we're gonna find another section of those bugs. Oh. You can see there's a lot of them, guys. I don't even want to touch these things um, with my bare feet. So I pull some grass out. Let me show you how I do it. Grab the grass with the feet. Grab as much as possible. Boom. Have a patch. And this is just an organic approach to, to reduce um, insect damage. You can see there's a lot of these little insects in here, and they're the ones that's eating my watermelon vines out. And to show you, because I was having blight, but the blight wasn't as heavy as how these insects will make it seem. Oh, look, there's a lot of them over here. And these things are also preventing my fruit sets. They eat a lot of my fruits the moment they set. So if you can look here straight ahead, I don't want to touch the leaves because they're going to run around. I want to catch them all at one time. But if you can look at this leaf straight ahead here, how it's drooping down. Let me see if I can find one. Uh, right here you can see this leaf here how it's drooping down like that it's because they already done sucked the fluids out of it all the life force out of all the juices so now that vine is going to die so what we're going to do here is we're going to move in sections we're going to touch them like that and this is the best organic method i have for these types of bugs i was letting them propagate themselves not knowing that they were actually destroying my crop so we're gonna go for the second section. Put that down. Yeah, I'm just gonna stomp them out. They're soft bodied, so it's not hard to stomp them out. Uh, pick that up. I'm gonna reuse it again. Catch this section. Now if I'm crushing my watermelon vines, so be it. I didn't get any fruit sets on these um anyway. This is a crimson sweet and a Charleston grain side is bad. The only reason why I didn't get fruit set of these bugs and then here look at that still have some down there for the most part they're smushed I just don't want it touching my foot it's just gross okay these things will not make they will not propagate anymore and any any of them that I see I will uh eliminate for sake of maintaining my food supply. Okay, let's see what's under the smushed bugs. See? So, and then what I'm gonna do with this, after I use that, I'm gonna line it up outside my bed. This is how I keep moisture inside my garden. Mulching with the grass. And this is the culprit right here. Still a few of them in here, but not quite as many now. There's another section with them. And they, they go anywhere the watermelon uh, vines are sending fruits or wherever there's just a watermelon vine. And after some time I began to notice that my vines weren't dying out just because of the, the blight. Because they were still living, because they were still living even though they had blight. It's just they'll become a little dry. And I noticed with these bugs here, they uh they 
suck all the life force out of the vibes. Like these things are still alive. Oh, I'm sorry. I killed over 10 watermelons. Get that hood design. And it's mostly due to uh, my error, not understanding their role in nature. But they like to destroy watermelon vines. Now here is a, 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 a direct example of what I mean by the leaves begin drooping. Here is an uninfluenced watermelon vine, unaffected, growing as it should be. And then what we have right next to it, matter of fact, is two vines. And look here, I have a crimson sweet that isn't growing anymore on this vine, only because they sucked all the life force out this vine. So this will die out. That's another crimson sweet that I lost. I had, I had a few melon. I just threw a crimson sweet in here, matter of fact. Um, a small fruit set. I'm not gonna look for it, but yeah, guys, those little things are terrible. I'm not gonna spray anything inside my garden. I'm literally just gonna stump them out. I'm gonna grab a bunch of grass, uh, pat them down, and stump them out. That's my only method. I, I, I wish I didn't have to result of such barbaric methods but when it comes to having to eat i have to eat guys and i'm not gonna buy the food that i'm capable of growing so either those little guys find a new food source or they continue getting stumped out that's my update for today guys i lost a few watermelon vines because of them but i mean as i said the vines literally do come back but not coming back as strong as I thought they would because those bugs are eating them as soon as they do come back. So we check over here. You can see here he's already trying to eat at the, uh, the vine. So I'm gonna have to kill him. So you can see I'm, I'm having uh, flowers being produced male flowers so the, the plant is still in production um these things do not quit i tell you they are all over the vine so the main stump is in this general area i have to move a couple things to uh, see the main stump but the main stump is a little bit bigger than my thumb but it, it's definitely still producing uh, watermelon vines as you saw that was the congo watermelon vine which uh produced seven congo melons for the first flush and I'm hoping to get a second flush before winter comes. And as you can see, this would have been a delicious Congo uh, watermelon, but it's been, I'm, I'm assuming the animal ate it into it about two days ago. Those seeds are, are black and they're ripe. So it was a ripe melon. I just, I was just too lazy to come get it. The, uh, the umbilical looked like this two days ago. So it, it, the umbilical has been dead on it. So it, it's definitely my fault. I'll just leave it for the animal. Since there's no more melons left but here we have a tree guys and what is this a volunteer watermelon vine so it's doing very well um you can see i had some rinds in here for the animal i need to use these to mulch now here goes some of those bugs again on my volunteer vine disturb them a little bit <sighs> As long as I can disturb their, uh, their mating phases, then everything should be fine. It's just when they, it's, it's no issue when there's just one or two of them, but then once they start mating, there's a bunch of a bunch of small ones, and I, that's when it obviously becomes an issue. I, I could have stopped it early on. You see that? Yeah, everyone here. Huh? Get off of there. Just disturb them a little bit. So yeah, guys, I have a volunteer watermelon vine. Um, it, mo it most likely may be a crossbreed. Um, it may not, if the um, melon wasn't crossed during its pollination. Here's a female flower right here. Female flower, so I'm hoping I have one that, that may have set already since they're uh, blooming. All right, guys, that's my update for today. How to rid how to organically rid watermelon vines of pests. 
and uh and keep that fruit set counting guys keep that fruit set count going all right these pepper flowers <laughs> 